It is really a pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome you again for another edition. And, you know, show, the show word of prophecy, that was the original name of our, our program, and I'm sure that's the name we will keep. A show word of prophecy. Welcome again to a show word of prophecy on the Three Messengers television channel. I'm your host, Glendon McFarlane. I welcome everyone from around the United States and around the globe. And, you know, I acknowledge all of us from all the continents who have been watching or viewing our programs and also those who are participating with their, through their comments and also their likes and subscriptions. Recently, I'm really fascinated by a diplomatic row between Jamaica and the United States, even though the Jamaican government has not uh, been forthright and is downplaying that that uh, dispute between them and the U.S. government. The United State, States, you know, have placed diplomats in Jamaica and vice versa. We, we reciprocate. Jamaicans reciprocate with the, you could say, formation of embassies and consulates in foreign countries just as the United States have done, has allowed other countries to do rather in this, in this country. So, you know, it's an, it, you could say it's an exchange of diplomats and the placement of diplomatic missions of embassies and consulates and high commissions in foreign countries reciprocating with each other. You know, this dispute that I'm, I'm now spe uh, speaking about has to do with the placement of these diplomats who are homosexuals in the U.S. embassies and consulates in Jamaica. But the Jamaican government has refused to acknowledge and accept these individuals as normal spouses, as the traditional marriages under the Jamaican law and constitution. LGBTQ, you could say uh, gay marriages are not legal or legalized in Jamaica. Homosexual marriages are not legal in Jamaica and not legally recognized. The United States government, when the Jamaican government refused to accommodate homosexual spouses in their consulates in Jamaica to recognize them, they didn't say, well, they can come, but they do not recognize them as spouses. Under Jamaican law, it cannot be done. The United States government, under Joe Biden's administration, responded by not renewing or asking two of our diplomats. I believe those diplomats are stationed in Washington, D.C., to inform them that their visas will not be renewed and they should leave the country on the expiration, before the expiration date, by or before the expiration date of their visas. I guess they get visas and work permits to, to be here in the United States.
I believe this is an effort to interfere in the domestic affair of Jamaica as a sovereign nation. On a recent visit by Vice President Kamala Harris, Jamaica was offered $30 million for the development of its domestic security and for other reasons. And during or near or after this offer was made, these requests were imposed on Jamaica as a country. The question is why was Jamaica chosen for this campaign by the United States in its effort to popularize its gay culture around the world? Why Jamaica was chosen for this? You know, they have chosen, say, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, you know, Iran, or other countries of the Middle East, Israel, for instance, for example, you know, they have reacted this way, you know, so I am actually saying here that, and I'm saying it in a respectful manner, that Jamaica's laws does not provide for homosexual couples and for, for it cannot be imposed on Jamaica to do that which is asked of the United States. It would first have to go through the people's house, the house of representatives and the house of the Senate in Jamaica. That's how it's done. It's not, you cannot impose a law on a foreign country and tell them that they must obey you or else you're going to expel their diplomats from your country. And expelling your diplomats under those conditions are not legal on, under international law. It's not legal under international law. It cannot be just one law in the world. Both parties are to be respected, both parties. So, you know, you can, you shouldn't be able to come in my house and tell me that, you know, you're going to take your homosexual spouse or lover in my house as a Christian and dwell in another room in my house and I must accept or and compel me to accept that. You know. So I'm just saying in a in 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 a very uh plain manner I'm saying that Jamaica's laws are to be respected just as Jamaicans living here in the United States are are required to obey its laws. Our laws are and customs and culture are also to be respected as long as they, they are Jamaica is not doing it any crimes against humanity. You know, as is the war as is taking place in the war with Russia or as being being you could say perpetrated by the Chinese government on the Uyghur Muslims in China. You know, we don't do that. So these sort of crimes against humanity is nothing going on like that in Jamaica. All we do, we, we, we have a traditional constitution as all nations did before LGBTQ became popular. Because before LGBTQ became popular, all most nations of the world had outlawed LGBTQ. The homosexual union was outlawed in most countries. Some con countries and cultures do not feel that they should normalize. For instance, the Obama and also the Biden administrations had, had begun. You know, I will insert 
some newspaper uh, articles in this presentation where you can look at some of the, the incidents involving African countries where the same homosexual marriages and culture has been imposed, has attempted to be imposed on African countries by the Biden and uh, Obama administrations. And their, you know, money was being given to these foreign countries as a condition, when money was offered to them as a condition of accepting or to legalize homosexual unions, homosexual manage, marriages. And there are some African countries who have re reacted in a negative way towards that because their culture is not used to that and does not accept that. So, so um, you know, traditionally, they stand for the family, a male and female. They stand for that kind of union, you, a union of the opposite sex. Even before the Biden administration, by the Obama administration, who I believe had um, designated, I think, $700 million worth of funds for that reason to these African countries and quite a number of these African countries, including Ghana recently and Nigeria, had resisted the, this request and had resisted the imposition of the United States uh, government to impose the practice of homosexuality on them. So they have responded by making legislation that outlaw homosexual marriages. Firmer, you could say firmer legislation. I believe that the answer pertains. Why, why would, why would uh, the United States make such a condition on Jamaica or try to impose such a a policy on Jamaica because there has got to be a reason you know leaders of countries do not just get up one day and say well boy we're we're gonna impose this law on a foreign nation they don't do that so there has to be a reason why what is the driving force what is the driving force behind both the Obama and Biden administration to try to impose homosexual marriages and unions through, the, through their diplomatic service. You know, sending diplomats to Jamaica who are homosexuals and to force the Jamaican government to, to accept them as normal couples, as couples, traditional are couples of traditional of a traditional marriage why would that be imposed on jamaica for what reason because there has to be a reason why this is so you know i i personally believe that this is a, a plan or a part of a new world order that's what i believe i believe it's much, much more than what is going on the, in the United States. It's much more than that. <clears throat> the, you see, a campaign by the Vatican and papacy along with the United Nations to normalize homosexuality in all countries around the world. The United Nations recently has vowed to defend the rights of the LGBTQ fraternity. And recently the Pope has come out in defense of gay marriage. Now this is the head of 
or clergyman, the head of the ecclesiastical or clergy head of a church, but also the head of a state, the, the smallest but most powerful state in the world is the Vatican. There are 80 million Catholics, Catholics in the United States. There are 80 million Catholics living here. So the Catholic Church, I, I would say maybe um, even among the United, with the United States are the two most powerful entities in the world. It's the two most powerful entities. There are more than a billion Catholics, a billion Catholics in the world. So the Pope has considerable political power and influence in the world. The United, combined with the United Nations, so combined with the United Nations, the United States of America, and the Vatican run by the Pope, the Holy See, combined power together, is an enormous power. And such an enormous power is made to bear on poorer African countries and also needy countries such as Jamaica, economically, you could say, economically challenged countries in the world such as Jamaica, that combined power will crush Jamaica. The attempt is now made to, to, to crush Jamaica and to disregard its constitution, to disregard the, the Jamaica's constitution and Jamaican law. The imposition of homosexuality the homosexual culture on Jamaica is a bid to crush its laws and to get Jamaica to submit. It's a test to get Jamaica to submit to the normalization of homosexual practices in their society, in the Jamaican society. I would say in our society, because I'm Jamaican also. The older generation was more spiritual in their upbringing is now facing opposition from the younger generation, which have wholeheartedly embraced homosexuality. Most of the, the young generation born but say between 1990 and 2010, you know, are, are, or have embraced homosexuality as norm as a normal cultural activity, even if they are not homosexuals themselves, they have embraced it and accepted it as normal. That is a that is a fact. Check on that and you'll see I'm right. So the mainstream Christian churches who had traditionally preached against homosexuality are now facing staunch opposition because of the legalization of homosexual marriages by the Supreme Court of the United States. Did the sup Supreme Court, did the Supreme Court did they see these type of disputes occurring and all this confusion occurring by the legalization of gay marriages, of homosexuality? Do you think they had seen and knew that this would, would cause a problem in the society? I believe they do know. They do know that it would, have, it would be causing a problem in the society but they are, have an agenda and I believe that they are trying to satisfy an agenda that's outside the court itself, but a powerful agenda. 
there are six Roman Catholic judges on the Supreme Court. And, and the, that court leans more towards Catholic Catholicism because they are dominated by Catholics. The Pope has signaled and indicated that he is for the normalization of homosexual marriages. You said it even recently, you know, as you will see by my insert in this video. You know, you will, can look to the left and you will see where I've inserted articles on this subject that the and statements by the pope and i'm just so flabbergasted i'm so surprised that the head of the catholic church the leader of a mainstream religion in the united states would go against god's will and rebel against God in such a blatant manner so as to accept homosexuality as, a, as normal cultural practice and moral, morally, because the scriptures speaks against that practice, against homosexuality. And though there are preachers who, who over the years have attempted to normalize homosexuality, and are even homosexuals themselves. There are homosexuals who are presently practicing as pastors, deacons, elders, theologians at churches. There are homosexual pastors who are who have men who have married men who have opened a church and declare themselves ministers. There are some mainstream churches also that have recently accepted homosexual practices and marriages in their, in their denominations. You know, the older generation, as I've said, most of the young people are now accepted as normal as a normal practice. But traditionally, the Bible and the old who know that it would have it would be causing a problem in the society. But they are, have an agenda and I believe that they are trying to satisfy an agenda that's outside the court itself, but a powerful agenda. There are six Roman Catholic judges on the Supreme Court. And, and the, that court leans more towards Cath Catholicism because they are dominated by Catholics. The Pope has signaled and indicated that he is for the normalization of homosexual marriages. You said it even recently, you know, as you will see by my insert in this video. You know, you will, can look to the left and you will see where I've inserted articles on this subject that the, and statements by the Pope. And I'm just so flabbergasted, I'm so surprised that the head of the Catholic Church, the leader of a mainstream religion in the United States, would go against God's will and rebel against God in such a blatant manner so as to accept homosexuality as, a, as normal cultural practice and moral, morally, because the scriptures speaks against that practice, against homosexuality. And though there are preachers who, who over the years have attempted to normalize homosexuality and are even homosexuals themselves. There are homosexuals who are presently practicing as pastors, deacons, elders, theologians at churches. There are homosexual pastors who are who have men who have married men 
who have opened a church and declare themselves ministers. There are some mainstream churches also that have recently accepted homosexual practices and marriages in their in their denominations. You know, the older generation, as I've said, most of the young people are now accepted as normal, as a normal practice. But traditionally, the Bible and the older generation knows that the homosexual practice is not, is not normal in society. It's not biblical and cannot be, be uh, supported with biblical, as biblical truth and doctrine. It cannot be substantiated, supported, or proved to be biblical. So it is an anti-Christian type of culture. That's what it is. An anti-Christian type of culture. The Bible speaks about that. You know, so let's look. Let's let let's look more. You know, at my notes a little, and then I will be going into the scriptures to see what the scripture says about the homosexual fraternity, the LGBTQ fraternity. What does is the Bible for or against that lifestyle? Is the Bible for or against that lifestyle? Because there are some homosexual ministers who have tried over and over again to contort and twist the Bible in so many different ways to justify homosexuality. But still, but but and have are contorted and misquoted the Bible so much. But the Bible, when you read the Bible straight and plain, it does not support. Anywhere in the scripture support homosexuality. The Bible says that God God loves us all. But God's God's love comes also with with responsibility. God expect us to be responsible practicing Christian. It doesn't mean that is, is lo God's love have conditions. God love has conditions. When God say he loves, he loves us all. Yes, where is creation? But God does not ex expect any of us as Christians to live just any way, anyhow. And say we are Christians. There are. There's the Ten Commandments for example. There are rules and guidelines. From the Genesis to Revelation. There are uh, the Christian codes and conduct. It's not just free for all. It, lest it wouldn't be Christian at all. You know, I believe that the failing to comply will mean retaliation from the United States on Jamaica. And this is a test of Jamaica's resolve to know as to normalize or make legal a custom of the United States that has recently become legal. So because LGBTQ homosexuality has just recently become legal in Jamaica in maybe about 2015, a few years ago. So, you know, the Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness, will he capitulate? Will he bend on the pressure, the pressure of the United States to accept financial assistance from the U.S. in exchange for legalizing gay marriage in Jamaica? Will he do that? Will he sell out Jamaica for a few dollars? Will he do that? 
30 million dollars and some assistance. Couldn't Jamaica earn 30 million dollars for itself? I believe so. I believe so. I know Jamaica is a fragile in um, tourism, alumina, and chemical industries. You know, influential in music and 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 art and tourism, but a frail economy. But does Jam Jamaica have other resources? Yes, ja Jamaica has oil deposits that have not yet been drilled. Jamaica has found considerable oil dep deposit. There is at least two and a half billion barrels of oil beneath the seashore of Jamaica and on land that has not yet been drilled, being mined. You know, it may take a few years to begin drilling, but Jamaica should have, you know, Jamaica has over the years developed this dependency syndrome. And to begin with, at this late stage, it is good to wean ourselves off the dependency on foreign nations and to start produce. Agriculture is one of our, you know, main tr trading products, agriculture, which I think we should step up our agricultural production, step it up and, and, and let it be a part of normalizing, you could say, the way of life of each Jamaican citizen to impress upon them to, to have gardens and to produce, to be engaged in agriculture even in a small way, you know, Jamaica has to do those things. Because when you develop this dependency syndrome on foreign countries, then you, you definitely see what the result can be. It makes you very vulnerable as a nation. So, you know, there is going to be a retaliation against Jamaica to refuse so you know there is going to be a retaliation against Jamaica to refuse to refuse complying with this request to accept homosexual couples and to treat to give them that treatment and diplomacy diplomatic privileges in Jamaica there will be a retaliation and the retaliation has already begun you know I believe that failing to comply will mean retaliation from the United States. And this will, this, this is a test of Jamaica's resolve so as to normalize or make legal a custom of the United States that has recently become legal. But will Prime Minister Andrew Holness of Jamaica capitulate to the pressure of the United States to accept financial assistance from the US in exchange for legalizing gay marriage in Jamaica. I do hope that this will not be the case. Most Jamaicans are not for gay marriage as to whether or not the prime minister will bow to US pressure, it is yet to be seen. Any such decision or action must have to go through the Jamaican parliament similar to the process of making a bill becoming law in the United States of America. The Prime Minister cannot unilaterally 
The Prime Minister cannot, on his own, make such a decision in Jamaica. He cannot do it. He cannot do that. You know, this has to go through Parliament. And it means our Constitution has to be rewritten or adjusted to accommodate homosexual marriages. The question is, will Prime Minister Holness, Andrew Holness, will he capitulate? Will he give in? Will he attempt to change Jamaican laws to accommodate homosexual marriages in Jamaica and to normalize LGBTQ? Will he do so? That's for it. That is yet to be seen. Whether or not he will do so, the answer for now is blowing in the wind. Looking at this matter, however, from a Christian perspective, we we know the history of Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, how Abraham, Abraham was visited. How Abraham was was visited by three angels. And these angels these angels came to him with two messages. One of the messages is that he will have a son. A son which is separate from Ishmael, or Ishmael, who you, we also call Ishmael, through Agar. And he will, that he will have a son from his wife, Sarah. That was the message. God also established at that time while visiting Abraham that he will have a son and that he will be a great nation. So the angel's visit to Abraham was twofold. When you look at Genesis chapter 18 and 19, the other purpose for the angel's visit to Abraham was to warn him of the upcoming destruction of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah had homosexual practices. They also had practices of bestiality. They lied also with beasts, with men and with beasts. They did all kinds of that he will have a son and that he will be a great nation. So the angel's visit to Abraham was twofold. When you look at Genesis chapter 18 and 19, the other purpose for the angel's visit to Abraham was to warn him of the upcoming destruction of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah had homosexual practices. They also had practices of bestiality. They lied also with beasts, with men and with beasts. They did all kind of things that are very, very, you could say, unacceptable, abominable to the Lord, to their maker, to their creator. And God was not pleased with Sodom and Gomorrah. Historically, historically looking at Sodom, looking at Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, the scriptural account, of, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, I will use, look at the historical account first, then I will go on to the scriptural references. In Genesis account, God reveals to Abraham that Sodom and Gomorrah are to be destroyed for their grave sins. Abraham pleads for the life of any righteous people. So Abraham was asking these angels in Genesis chapter 18 and 19 to spare the lives of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. 
especially if God could find even 10 people. And even he went to lower and lower, you know. But the angels believed that they were not going to find anyone. That city was gone morally down the drain, basically. When it comes down to immorality and abominate noble acts of homosexuality and bestiality, all those type of thing, indulgences they, they were involved in. They were indulged in. And uh, Abraham seemed to negotiate with God on behalf of the righteous in, and agrees to spare them if ten righteous people could be found, two angels appearing as men are sent to Lot in Sodom, but are met with a wicked mob who asks for the newcomers. Lot offers the mob his daughters instead. But this only further enrages the mob. So they were given women, something that I wouldn't do, because I wouldn't offer my children, my daughter, to no nasty, disgusting mob. To desecrate her, I wouldn't do that. But I guess Lot believed that he was uh, trying to protect the angels. But the angels did not need Lot's pr protection. Because they had power that they could destroy that city and burn it to the ground. They, they, Lot didn't need to offer his daughter. To, to, to that vicious, you know, vicious, angry, distasteful mob, mob of men who wanted to ravage three men that came there, to, who turned out to be the angel of the angels of death. They didn't know that. They didn't know that that would be the last occasion. And they were warned. Lot was told to flee because the angels had come to destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot offers the mob his daughters instead, and this only further enrages the mob, who are then struck blind by the angelic guest, finding only Lot and his family as righteous among the inhabitants. The angels warn Lot to quickly evacuate the city and not to look back as they flee the destruction. Lot, Lot's wife looked back and up and upon the city and it turned and she turned into a pillar of salt. The word of God is evident in its view of homosexuality. The most commonly quoted Bible verses are Leviticus 18.22, Leviticus 20 verse 13. So those are quotations that you should look at because of time is limited. We cannot look at all those Bible verses. You know, Leviticus 20 verse 13 which states that it is an abomination for a man to lie with another man as he would with a woman in Romans 1 verse 26 and 27. Paul says that homosexuality is contrary to God's natural order. That's the Apostle Paul now, now speaking, now writing or his writings. Right in uh, First Corinthians six verse nine to ten, he, he he lifts homosexuality as one of the sins that will prevent someone from entering the kingdom of God. While the Bible is clear, it is its view of a kind of things that are very very. You could say unacceptable abominable to the Lord, 
to their maker, to their creator, and God was not pleased with Sodom and Gomorrah. Historically, historically, looking at Sodom, looking at Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, the scriptural account of, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, I will use, look at the historical account first, then I will go on to the scriptural references. In Genesis account, God reveals to Abraham that Sodom and Gomorrah are to be destroyed for their grave sins. Abraham pleads for the life of any righteous people. So Abraham was asking these angels in Genesis chapter 18 and 19 to spare the lives of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, especially if God could find even 10 people and even he went to lower and lower you know but the angels believed that they were not gonna find anyone that city was gone morally down the drain basically when it comes down to immorality and abominate never acts of homosexuality and bestiality, all those type of thing, indulgences they, they were involved in, they were indulged in. And uh, Abraham seemed to negotiate with God on behalf of the righteous in, and agrees to spare them if 10 righteous people could be found, two angels appearing as men are sent to Lot in Sodom but are met with a wicked mob who asks for the newcomers. Lot offers the mob his daughters instead. But this only further enrages the mob. So they were given women, something that I wouldn't do, because I wouldn't offer my children, my daughter, to no nasty, disgusting mob, to desecrate her I wouldn't do that but I guess Lot believed that he was uh, trying to protect the angels but the angels did not need Lot's pr protection because they had power that they could destroy that city and burn it to the ground they, they, Lot didn't need to offer his daughter to, to, to that vicious you know vicious, angry, distasteful mob, mob of men who wanted to ravage three men that came there to, who turned out to be the angel of the angels of death. They didn't know that. They didn't know that that would be the last occasion and they were warned. Lot was told to flee because the angels had come to destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot offers the mob his daughters instead, and this only further enrages the mob, who are then struck blind by the angelic guest, finding only Lot and his family as righteous among the inhabitants. The angels warn Lot to quickly evacuate the city and not to look back as they flee the destruction. Lot, Lot's wife looked back and up and up on the city and it turned and she turned into a pillar of salt. The word of God is evident in its view of homosexuality. The most commonly quoted Bible verses are Leviticus 18.22, Leviticus 20 verse 13. So those are quotations that you should look at because of time is limited. We cannot look at all those Bible verses. You know, Leviticus 20 verse 13 which, which states, that it is an abomination for a man to lie 
with another man as he would with a woman. In Romans 1 verse 26 and 27, Paul says that homosexuality is contrary to God's natural order. That's the Apostle Paul now, now speaking, now writing, or his writings, right? In uh, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9 to 10, he, he, he lifts homosexuality as one of the sins that will prevent someone from entering the kingdom of God. While the Bible is clear, it is its view of homosexuality. So the Bible is clear of its view of homosexuality because there are so many re references that we could go to and look at to see that that is so. <clears throat> you know, so Romans 1 verse 26, 27, the, the Apostle Paul say that homosexuality is is contrary to, to God's natural order and results from rejecting God. Leviticus 18 verse 22 says, You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. That is one reference. You know, so God destroyed the city of Sodom and Gomorrah because of its homosexual practices. You know, read Genesis 18 and 19 to get the full story of that. Leviticus 20 verse 13. If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination and they shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. <laughs> Within the Old Testament scriptures, that was the penalty. The penalty is death for homosexuality, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. But eternal death, eternal, not stoning in the, in the New Testament. It was stoning in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, that, that death, that eternal death will be in the judgment when God, God returns. You know, because God has, has already said, you know, if a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. In Jude 1 verse 7, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulge in sexual immorality and pursue unnatural desire, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. That is what Sodom and Gomorrah received based on Jude 1 verse 7. In the New Testament, that is. So one cannot come with the argument that the, for homosexuality was forbidden in the Old Testament. So, so and we're not under law because that was is what some of the practicing homosexual preachers. Those, those are the things, those are their excuses. But in the New Testament, we can see that God is against that practice. God doesn't hate the homosexual. God doesn't say we should hate homosexuals either. But God has a standard. And his standard is that we should refrain from such practices because they are an abomination unto him so he doesn't hate and we shouldn't hate either but in saying that we shouldn't hate we that doesn't mean that we should be complicit either that doesn't mean that we should come complicit and accommodating of homosexual practices and homosexuals you know we can love them some of them are our neighbors some of them are, our, are even our friends. So, should we hate them? Absolutely not. Should we teach them and preach to them and show them that, that it, it's an abomination unto God? Yes, we should. Should we 
do bodily harm to homosexuals? Absolutely not. That's not our place. That place belongs to God. God gives the judgment. Because, for instance, there are people who, they may not be homosexuals, but they are thieves. They are murderers. They are fraudsters. You know, they will, they, they, they scam people. They, you know, they do robberies. They do murder. They, they covet. They do adultery and fornication and all of that stuff. And they call themselves Christians and they're going straight to hell. Just like the people who do, who practice the homosexuality. So, you know, it, it, it makes no, you could say all sins are the same, but the question now is, is homosexuality, homosexuality, is it accepted by the Bible? And from what I'm reading and referencing since that I've just quoted, the answer is absolutely not. It's not accepted by the Holy Scriptures. The Holy Scriptures are, speaks against it in so many places, at least 25 places. In Romans chapter 1, verse 26, it's, it says, For this reason God gave them up to dishonorable passions for their woman exchange, for their woman exchange natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. So you see, Romans chapter 26, Romans chapter 1, verses 26 to 28 is speaking about this, this, this passion that men are for men and women are for women. You know, it, it says, so, you know, let me continue reading. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions for their woman exchange natural relations for those that are contrary to nature and men likewise gave up their natural relations with women and were consumed with passions for one another men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error and since they did not see it fit to acknowledge god god gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. So God is not pleased with that practice, the practice of the LGBTQ fraternity and the homosexual fraternity. God is not pleased at all, you know, with that lifestyle. And traditional preachers have been preaching that from, from Old Testament time until now. Because, and it is only recently, 2025, that LGBTQ and homosexuality has been made legal in the United States. So, so now there is, an, is a big confrontation now between the practicing homosexuals and traditional preachers and evangelists, you know, who ought to have their right to preach the gospel, who the Constitution protects to preach the gospel based on freedom of speech, freedom of conscience, and freedom of religion. So, so you know, the idea that, that um, all of a sudden, because the, the, the Supreme Court legalized LGBTQ a few years ago, that all of a sudden now, preachers, have, have, when you preach now from the word of God, as a preacher, you have now become a homophobe. You're homophobic. The name calling and the condemnation have, have begun of preachers who continue to preach from the Bible against sin, you know, not only against the sin of adultery, fornication, robbery, murder, you know, covetousness, you know, all of those sins, 
but also against the homosexual lifestyle. You know, it is a form of also adultery and fornication too. Because it's having a form of carnal knowledge from a man to a man and a woman to a woman. And a abomination unto God. So, you know, we cannot now say all of a sudden everybody is a homophobe. Or everybody is a hater. As is being robbery, murder, you know, covetousness. You know, all of those sins, but also against the homosexual lifestyle. You know, it is a form of also adultery and fornication too. Because it's having a form of carnal knowledge from a man to a man and a woman to a woman. An abomination unto God. So, you know, we cannot now say all of a sudden everybody is a homophobe. Or everybody is a hater, as is being done by some members of the fraternity, some members of of those who are practicing homosexual. That all of a sudden, you know, we we who preach the gospel and preach against that lifestyle are now homophobes. You know, so that cannot just hold up at all. That reasoning cannot hold up because. The Bible is against that lifestyle. And and I've been preaching this thing and preaching this thing to friends that I oppose that lifestyle from the Bible even before it became legal in the United States as a legal practice. So why all of a sudden now should you stop preaching the gospel freely as you should because somebody is going to now get up and call you a homophobe. Or, or other names that I've heard them call people, you know, who oppose the lifestyle, or who are not for it. But, you know, saying you're not for something doesn't mean that you, you hate the people. You know, I don't hate people just because, you know, they may be an homosexual or because they're practicing homosexuals. I just don't get up and hate people. For that reason, you know, because God is against the lifestyle, but that doesn't mean that God hates his creation. God cre- created man, but he wants man to, to obey him. He wants man t- to serve him. And God created a woman for a man and a man for a woman. Didn't create man, men for men and women for women. In Mark, 10 verse 6 to 9 but from the beginning of creation God made them male and female therefore a man shall leave his mother and hold fast to his wife and the two sh- and the two shall become one flesh so they are no longer two but one flesh what therefore God has joined together let no man cast asunder mark 10 verse 6 to 9 you know, a man and a woman, that is what God had ordained. That is what God ordained according to Mark 10 verses 6 to 9. You know, and the Lord appeared unto him. In Genesis 18, is telling of a story where, the story of Abraham and of the three angels that came to Abraham and told Abraham, that they were going to destroy the city of cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham entertained them. Abraham accepted them as guests in his household, fed them, washed their feet. After that, they head, headed towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and they headed there to rescue Lot, Abraham's nephew, Lot, and his family. You know. So. I tell you. When they went there. To, to, to Lot's house. You know. And the Lord said. Because of the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. And their sin is very grievous. I will go down now and see. Whether they have. Have done altogether. 
to cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. So the angel say, said that they're going to go down there in Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, to, to, to see the state of the city and, and to re also to rescue Lot, Abraham's nephew and his family. You know, Abraham was asking, began to ask him whether or not 10 people is in there. And the angels basically said that, I tell you, when they went there to, to, to Lot's house, you know, and the Lord said, because of the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have have done all together to cry of it which is come unto me and if not I will know. So the angels say, said that they're gonna go down there in Sodom and Gomorrah you know to to, to see the state of the city and, and to re also to rescue Lot, Abraham's nephew and his family. You know, Abraham was asking, began to ask him whether or not 10 people is in there. And the angels basically said that they do not see that number as being repentant in that city. So they are, go are going to go there and destroy it, which they did. They did go there and destroy that city with some other small cities along with Sodom and Gomorrah. I think about three others. I think about there There may have been a nearby city also that was destroyed. <clears throat> but, you know, I, I'm telling you that, that Christians are facing opposition now. And the time is coming where, where there's going to be, be opposition against Christians. For preaching the gospel, including, you know, their opposition to the gay lifestyle. And they're going to face a time of trouble that has never been seen by man upon this earth before. They're going to face a time of trouble. The great time of trouble that shall come upon the earth. They're going to face that, you know. Because the children of God will be hate, be hated, and at the time, in 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 Daniel chapter twelve, it Daniel even Daniel saw in his time that there was gonna be a great time of trouble, and that that time shall in Daniel chapter twelve. Daniel speak of such a time. Of, t of that time of trouble. And at that time shall Michael stand up for the great prince. Which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Everyone. Every one that shall be found written in the book, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So we see here, we, we are seeing a prophecy, which is very true, because we're living in a time where knowledge is increased, has been increased. This is the time that Daniel had spoken about in Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 to 4. In Matthew 24, verses 14 to 14, 
the gospel of the kingdom from verse 14 shall be preached to all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by daniel the prophet stand in the holy place whoso readeth let him understand then let them which be in judea flee into the mountains let them which is on the house stop not come down to take anything from his house neither let which is in the field return to take his clothes and woe unto them that are with child and to them that give sock in those days but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter neither on the sabbath day for then shall be a great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days be, should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So if God does not shorten his, the, our days, the days that we will have available on this earth, the days that that will be allowed us to rip for repentance. God does not shorten those days. Even God's chosen, God's elect will not be saved. If God does not, in other words, God is saying that things have become so desperate so desperate and so urgent that he has to shorten the time in which he should return in order that his children are saved continuing in matthew chapter 24 it says for there shall arise false christs and false prophets from his house neither let which is in the field return to take his clothes and woe unto them that are with child and to them that give sock in those days but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter neither on the sabbath day for then shall be a great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be and except those days be sh should be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened so if god does not shorten his the our days the days that we will have available on this earth the days that that will be allowed us to rip for repentance god does not shorten those days even god's chosen god's elect will not be saved if god does not in other words god is saying that things have become so desperate so desperate and so urgent that he has to shorten the time in which he should return in order that his children are saved continuing in matthew chapter 24 it says for there shall arise false christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they will deceive the very elect you know it, it it is very troubling to know that this is coming but the lord have told us through his prophet through his prophet to be ready to be ready the lord has told us through his prophets to be ready and warn us you know so i'm see i'm telling you folks that you should be ready and that you should repent repent of all your sins and i see when i speak i speak to all my friends families 
viewers and listeners, but family members also. I'm speaking to you all. Not only to visitors, to the sermon I speak to you, the words I speak to you, I speak for myself. Sermon I preach to you, I preach to myself also. Because we should all repent. You know, because the, near, the nearness of the Lord's coming. Because of the nearness of the Lord's coming. Which he will, the days which he will cut short. Have you noticed how fast a day go by now? How quickly a day go by? The days are being shortened. There is still 24 hours in a day. But when you look at the day from start to finish, it ends so fast. And you could see that the Lord is at work shortening out the days so that we can, so that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all nations and he can come. That his words are spread throughout the world and mankind have the opportunity to accept or reject it, even though most people will reject it because as it was in the time of Lot and as it was in the time of Noah, so shall it be in the time of the end. I'm telling you, you know, it's a pleasure speaking to you today. It's wonderful to be able to remind us all, to remind us all of the importance of repentance and re renewal of our minds. Ephesians chapter 6, read Ephesians. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of, of your mind. You know. It, it, it is amazing how reli reliable and how transformational the word of God is. That transformation can be applied to our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God to live through, through us and to live in our lives. You know, except those days be shortened, according to 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 uh, to Revelate to Matthew twenty four. Except those days be shortened, Matthew twenty four verse twenty two. There should no flesh be saved, but for the elect say, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or here or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, who shall hear great signs and wonders is so much, as if, as if it were they should deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Christ will come from heaven above. He will not be found in no desert or downtown anywhere or in some secret corner anywhere. He's coming from, from an eye. He's coming from above. And he's coming with his mighty angels, with his holy angels. He's coming to judge the world as the righteous king. So we need to put out the abominable acts that we practice in our lives behind us and repent. Repent of our sins and the Lord will save us. Be found worthy through his Holy Spirit to transform our lives as we surrender to him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to praise and to honor you today and to speak your words 
to remind ourselves of the sins to which we are we are enslaved to the sins to which we are which have are holding us back to receive eternal life O Lord we pray Lord for your forgiveness of all those sins let us repent Lord and for those who are struggling with this with those sins the sins of homosexual practices the sins of adultery the sins of stealing the sins of backstabbing of murder of fraud of hating our brother help us Lord not to be guilty of not loving our brothers and sisters because we cannot only say it in words only we have got to do it and show it oh Lord and that is the problem with many of us who just believe that we can say just say the word love with and what it's empty and empty love with emptiness that means absolutely nothing oh Lord Jesus unless we show it unless we practice so cleanse us from all sin I pray and give us your mercy forever and ever from this day henceforth in Jesus name amen as we surrender to you Lord fully amen thank you very much for watching and for your patience today hope we will all be worthy to inherit that eternal kingdom and the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So let us keep in touch and let us be ready for the next program. Until next time, may you have a wonderful day today. Amen.